No, because last week when you hit me and, and we were discussing it, I'm like, and then they hit me and was like, oh, shit. I'm like, yeah, but I got AC pod. I'm like, I'm going to just bring the laptop. I can do it there. Like, it, it don't really matter. You know what I'm saying? Bro. With this whole you, thing, you, you can be wherever. The crazy part it, is, nah, and the crazy part is I've done several where people haven't even been in the States anyway. Yeah, yeah, for like sure. Like DG, no, I did DG. He was over in um, I mean, Israel. Israel, when I did him. <laughs> Oops, my bad. I did... um. Your cousin, Dwayne Wilson, he was exactly. over in, um, yeah. So, yeah, ain't, mm -hmm. I, I did a, a ton of them, and ain't nobody been in the state. So everything is all good, bro. Yeah, everything no, is. I, I, man, how you doing, bro? You good? I'm down here, man. I'm good, man. It, it's, it's it's love down here. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I, you know, I'm getting a chance to hoop somewhere else, display my time. Nah, for sure. You know, so, but no, I'm good. Life is good. Baby's good. You know, family's good. Pop's good. Pops my is man. Good, man. That's my yeah. man, bro. Yeah, he good, man. man. He uh. Good. He trying to figure out retirement, but <laughs> yeah, you was telling me, yeah. He just he just a worker, man. Like and he uh, can't sit down, bro. Can't sit down. Like he 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 retired for. Let me see. I want to say three three months, three and a half months, maybe before. And he can't do it. He start driving my stepmom crazy. I she bet. Like, hey, get out the house. You need to go you gotta do, do something. something, right? You gotta you do can't something. Sit up under me all day like this. So no, nah, he. Uh, but that's he, pops, he, man. Pops, all he yeah, he's so man. active. So sure. active. And he's always so, been that way. You know what I'm saying? That's I've what I'm saying. Ever since I was little, man. Like sure. yeah, I've never yeah. known him to be sitting down. Whether it's he's doing something at the center, where he's doing AU, right. or it's a night program, right. or this time, whatever. Like he's always been active and on the go. So. Nah, for sure. What is hey so. What I like to do before we even hop into everything, I always try to find out nothing sports related. Right. What is Jamil watching on television right now? So it's crazy. So I honestly, I just watched the first Top Gun. Oh. Uh, so I'm going I'm to watch Top Gun Maverick probably tonight or in the next couple of days. Yeah. Um, I just, I just finished Stranger Things not too long okay. ago. So okay, I mean, how, how do you like it? So I haven't tapped in yet. How you like it? Okay, so I actually like Stranger Things. You know what I'm saying? Okay. At first, it was kind of, I mean, it's weird. You know, it, it takes place Not in like, sure. a small town in Indiana or whatever. But if you pay attention and everything, it's actually a pretty decent show. Like, I, I mess with it tough. Um, what else am I, 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 uh, I watched? I'm how is it, and real quick, uh, how is it in relation to uh, Ozark? If you've seen Ozark, is it similar? I, I have seen Ozark. So Ozark is like probably in my top five TV shows I've watched. You know Man, Ozark, Ozark is different. Is different. Bro. That boy, oh, is different. Berg, different. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's <laughs> different, bro. Who, like him, like like Man, Berg, is different, bro. Dude. It's but, different. Uh, but uh, I, it's it's a completely different kind of like genre. Okay, you know, got like, you. Thing like you know, obviously you know the Ozark is dealing with you know the cartel and what what they got going on. Stranger Things is more like an alternate dimension type thing, like. Mm. somebody messed around and played with something they wasn't supposed to and now something from another dimension is now gotcha. messing with people in this world so gotcha. i mean gotcha. it's, it's kind of the, the little sci-fi thing but I, I dig it i, I rock with it okay okay that's yeah. it i mean anything else that you tap into i'm trying to, I'm trying to think I, you know i've been on netflix you know you know since i got down here just trying to you know pass the time i, I think right. the last thing i watched was the uh the day shift with uh Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx and Megan Good. That was good. That was good. It was good. I, I was surprised. It's gonna be a like, part two too. If you saw how first, Sweet came, yeah, it's gonna be yeah, a part two. Sure. In the first minute, you know what I'm saying? They got straight to it. I'm like, oh, right. okay. But no, yeah. uh, that, that was actually pretty good. It was surprising to me, but it, it was pretty good. I uh but I ain't really checked nothing out lately, man. I think the the thing that I do have to finish and th that I that I am like invested in is Peaky Blinders. I heard that was decent too. No, nah, so it's a, it's about the Irish mob, it's right? Like the Irish mob family, and they get down right. like they okay. really deal with it. So uh, okay. that's the one thing that I do have to finish. My boy Mike Orris put me on that. Bro, it's so funny that you know, like I watch a lot of um, mafia shoot 'em up, bang bang movies and sure. shit because I know I'm not gonna do that in real life. Yeah, and I look at myself vicariously through, through them. them. You, you know have what I'm to. saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> so, for sure. yeah, hey, to. real quick, did you hear? I'm, I'm sure you did the whole okay. hoopla. Make sure you like this video and the God subscribe. Did. Joint, of course, of course. I was just listening the, to it. The J verse, of course. I was just listening to it. What? Give me your feedback, bro. I, I like. 
it's it it baffles me that Hove is fifty plus still rapping like this. You know what I'm saying? His combos, right. his delivery, his his double and triple entendres, like it, it's ridiculous at this point. And to the point, I was talking to somebody and I was like, it's like he breathes a different version of air when he's in the booth. Bro, you know let, let me tell you what I let me tell you what I did, Jamil. I called my travel agent and I was like, yo, I need to book a trip to Jupiter. Right. I need to figure out where this planet is or something that he's on. She was like, yo, no, yep, your passport is revoked. They got different type of water up there. They got different type of food up there. And I'm a whole Venger. I'm a whole Venger. Sure. So like I'm kind of biased, but I'm a realistic guy too. And at the same yeah, sure. time. Bro, he went so nuts, man. It's it's crazy. And and I was telling somebody, I, I was telling the homie on my team, like, I didn't even like I love Rose. Rose, I'm a big Rose fan. I'm a huge Wayne fan. Cause you gotta think about it. When Wayne had that run, I no, was Wayne had a I'm crazy high school. Run. Yeah, I'm in sure. high school in AAU. Sure. So every yeah. summer in the in the in the van, we popping in Wayne, the drop two, the drop three, like dedication like we this is all we listen to so i'm a huge wayne fan and i used to argue with my boy antoine oliver all the time because he was a huge ho fan I'm like man mm -hmm. what ain't like hove can't mess with wayne right but it right. wasn't until it's like uh they say about like wine and stuff it's an acquired taste it yep. wasn't until you got older well i got older and i started experiencing things that i really started yeah. understanding what this man is talking about yeah but it's I, an appreciation I, it's a different yeah, appreciation i found yeah, myself sure. listening to the track just listening to it for the first four minutes, not really paying attention with Ho saying, I mean, what uh, Rose saying, what Wayne saying, I'm just waiting to get to whole verse. Yeah. And that's how it was like the first four or five times I listened to it. And I'm nah, thinking- it's, it's different, it's different, man, bro. You, you gotta go back and listen to your boys. Like them, and, and, you do and, 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 the, and the funny part is it was like, okay. And I know we getting long with it out there, y'all. I know this is about a sports <laughs> podcast. We're gonna get there for sure. Um, <laughs> But it was like, okay, Rose did what Rose do, came in, gave you a slick 12, a For slick sure. 12. The smooth 12, luxurious. Wayne came back and bodied the 16. He gave That's you a, a crazy 16. Crazy but then 16. Jay went out of his damn mind and gave you 48. And it's so crazy because they ver their verses were so good. But then Jay just took the song to another level another and it's level. almost like, bro, like, what? Like, you forget they on the track. That's what I'm saying. And it, it, reminds, me of, it reminds me of, because I was watching an interview with Pusha T and he was talking about when he sent Hove the neck and wrist track. <clears throat> and Hove was like, well, what you want me to do with this? And Pusha mm -hmm. was like, what you do with everything else, right. like take right. it to the next level. He was like, right. because obviously when you send something to Hove, like this is like you expecting it to go there. But like, like you said, man, Rose came in with his luxurious, how he do his thing. And I was telling my, my teammate, Josh, I'm like, yo, Wayne really went crazy for a minute. He and went half. nuts, bro. He, he went, went nuts. Went crazy he went nuts. Half, but you've heard about Hove's verse for like two weeks. Oh, this yeah. is the greatest verse he's ever yeah. recorded. This, that, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna go that far, but yeah. 10 minutes, yeah, but, but I'm saying what people say, oh, he nah, I know, I got 10 you. minutes and he hopped on or whatever. Like, yeah. you heard, heard about it so much, and then you finally get to it, and you're like, damn. You know what I'm Man, saying? So You were nuts, bro. Let me uh, go ahead and intro this real quick. Let me intro sure. this real quick. New viewers, welcome. My return of viewers, thank you and welcome back to Baseline the Goal Line. I am your host, Al Boogie, Alan Colburn, and in the building with me right now. Thank you, bro, for doing this. I really appreciate you, man. I don't even know all these accolades. I, I gotta give them out. Uh former Oregon Duck, former Marquette Golden Eagle, professional basketball player, one of my friends that I can call consider my friends. For sure, for sure. Jamil, Jamil, Jamil Wilson is in the building. How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. All love, always, you know, healthy, blessed. Man. Grateful. First of all, bro, once again, I just want to thank you, man, for coming on, bro. I've been, um, it's ironic that I ran into you at the spot, at the um, joint. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Because I was trying to tap in with you and I didn't have your math. 
Yeah. And I knew I could have reached out to Dwayne and got it, Bikes yeah. and got it, whatever, but I wanted to tap in with you to to oh, to, to get it myself. For sure. For so sure. um man, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate yeah, you, you know, bro. I appreciate you having me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh it, I always see people do these things and stuff like that. And you know, I've always wanted to get on them, even if I was, you know, just to participate in speaking or just talk about nah, for sure. whatever. You know what I'm saying? This is dope. For sure. And I like it, man, for me, because it is it, it gives me a chance to fall back and for me to bug out as a fan right right because that's the that's first and foremost anybody that i have that i have on my platform i'm a fan first right and then i go into the personal relationships okay. you know what i'm saying okay. so I, I really appreciate you but um let's do a toast real quick this is um pinot grigio that i'm sipping on what you got i got a little uh cabernet suave okay so I always toast to life, health, wealth, and last but not least, sports talk. Salute. I'll take that. So, bro, I want to just, I mean, you got so many layers to Jamil Wilson, the basketball player and the athlete. Um, I want to I want to kind of start in high school and then we're going to work our way forward. Okay. So um well, let me just do this real quick. First of all, before we even tap into high school, at what point did you figure out that this is what you wanted to do um, as a career? I would say, I want to say it was probably eighth grade. Okay. In the uh, Akron Classic in Ohio, mm -hmm. we played Braun in them team. Mm -hmm. In the first half, I ain't stinking it up, but I ain't being myself. And Johnny Lacey come up to me at half, like, bro, like, what you doing? Like, is this what you want to do or not? He was like, don't worry about nothing else. Like, if you're going to get to it, like, let's get to it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you better than these dudes. And right now you're not showing it. Right. Like, he was the dude that kind of, like, lit the fire under me. Like, all right, right. like, I know myself, like, mm -hmm. out here on the circuit, like, I, I can do this, I can do that. But, like, to have someone else, like, my peer believe in me like that, that's gotcha. like, cool. So at that point, is where we ended up beating them. We ended up coming back in the second half. We ended up beating them. And at that point, I knew that, like, there were certain points and places I could reach with this game. You know, that was probably my first realization of, like, shit, you can, you can play with the top dudes. Like, like, you can really do this for a living if you want to. What, and and, what, and I, what, was, that the, was that the point where you said – where you started like feeling like you could separate yourself from the competition was during that run in eighth so, grade or so that 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 point happened to me my sophomore year. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so I don't want to force it, then we'll get okay. there. We'll definitely get yeah, there. Sure. And at this point in time, um during your eighth grade year, what what were your measurables? How tall were you back then? So I think I just hit a growth spurt in my eighth grade year. So I was probably like six four. Okay. And I was probably like Maybe like buck seventy five, like skinny kid, whatever. But yeah. Was, was the coordination of everything there? Was the coordination and athleticism? Right. There? It was because my father uh, played, and he was he was a big. He's big. Mm -hmm. I mean, we the same size now. So my dad was six nine, but mm -hmm. he was always super athletic. But so they put him right. under the bucket. So when I started to take the game seriously, my pops worked on me on all my guard skills. Dribbling with your left hand, dribbling with your right hand, passing with your left hand, passing with your right hand, layups, all this other stuff, proper footwork in the jumpers, left, right, right, left, fading, mm -hmm. all that stuff. So I knew how to do those. He worked with me, so I knew how to do those things. So once I kind of grew into my body, mm -hmm. whatever, the coordination was already there because I had already been working on these small things, jump rope and, and right. all types of stuff like that. So, um, so by the time I got... I think eighth grade, eighth grade, and then like my ninth grade year, my freshman year at Hornick is really when I just kind of embraced and like kind of grew into my body and I was mm -hmm. comfortable where I was at. Perfect segue because um, I, I do want to talk to you about the Horley thing and, and what was it that made you decide to go to Horley? Because for all intents and purposes, mm -hmm. right, um, especially now, you know, mm -hmm. and you look at the area in Racine and a lot of times the private schools are the ones who get the athletes. Right. The same right, right. right. Um, 
Well, let me rephrase that. That's how it is now. Was it the same as, as back then for you? For, for was it? It was, it was. It was definitely the same back then. I don't mm -hmm. think it was as advertised, but it was definitely the same. Like, okay. uh, so going into my freshman year, Coach Les, that was at St. Cats, mm -hmm. he reached out to me every year. I mean, my freshman year, my sophomore year, my junior year, every year to try and get me to go to St. Cats. And he was like, don't worry about it. Like, we'll find a way to get you a scholarship or get you in on a program or something where your parents don't have to, you know, break their backs or like whatever. But the thing about me, like, I've always been like loyal to the soil. Like, mm -hmm. I grew up with my homies. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, we grew up playing ball together. Like, I want to play ball with them in high school. Like, I don't want to, like, switch up on the guys and, gotcha. and go somewhere else. But I, I, had to, I had the opportunity to go to St. Cats. I had the opportunity to go to Racing Lutheran. Perry, not so much. And then I think even after my sophomore year that, that I was just talking about, I even got an offer to go to Montrose Christian. And I was just like, nah. Like, I, nah, I turned it down. I remember, I still remember they sent me a huge box of stuff, of Jordan gear, gray and green. Yeah, Jordan yeah, gear, yeah, for sure. Sweatsuits and shirts and stuff. Yep, and, and you I, would think somebody, so so here's, here's what's crazy, because at that point in time, your sophomore year, you're 15, 16 years old, and you see all the glitz and glamours that's over there at Montreal. You would think somebody in your, in your um, position would have jumped to that opportunity. Yeah. So, what was the what was what was the reason as to why you didn't take that opportunity? So, it's so because thing, like you say, your loyal, your loyalty yeah, and your yeah, friends. For sure, for sure. I, and, and it's just a simple fact that like I'm 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 hugely family oriented. So like mm. me jumping shit and my pops and you know what I'm saying, not be able to come to my game, my sisters and stuff like that. Like that means a lot to me, like my support cast. And not to mention that summer, um, I ended up losing, I lost my mom, you know what I'm saying, to cancer. Uh, yeah. So I, I wasn't trying to really go too far away from what I, I knew, you. you know what I'm saying? So, um, but no, I had I had the opportunity to go there and I thought about it because the, the coach there, when I spoke to him or whatever, they were talking about the whole, pipeline that KD did mm -hmm. so if you ever uh look back on my top three schools that I committed to or decided from it was Marquette Michigan State and Texas mm -hmm. oh uh, yeah see what I'm saying I forgot so, Oregon did come uh, it would yeah okay we'll get there it was, it was Oregon yep 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 I mean it was Oregon Texas and Michigan State Michigan State yeah so it was uh so the whole I so I stayed in touch with them and whatever and Texas was obviously in my top three but um at that moment in time, I wasn't really ready to pick up everything and mm -hmm. go somewhere fresh after everything I was going through. I, I'd rather be home with my family and then, you know, my my close friends, my boys and stuff. So uh, right. I, I ended up just staying there and it, it worked out because I'd always believed, like Dame says it now, you hear Dame say it a lot now and CJ McCollum say it now, like, don't matter where you are, like, if you can hoop, they'll find you. You know they gonna find you. And that's, they definitely that's gonna how find I always, you. That's how I always felt like. And it's, especially nowadays too, you know, with um, what year did you graduate high school? Oh nine. So that was just like the well, it wasn't. Of course, it's not as popular as it is right now. But that was just the that was becoming the evolution of YouTube and right, 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 uh, right, social right, media right, and stuff right. like that. It was just coming into 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 yep, fold. Think, so you were. I think that year that I went to Oregon in 09 is when I first got a Twitter Twitter See? account. So okay. that's when it was just starting. I mean, and, and now it's just crazy. You can get oh, it's, seen. It's, unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. It's nuts. It's nuts now. But let, let's, do, let's do this. So your freshman year when you got to Horley, mm -hmm. um, who was there, like upperclassmen and stuff your freshman year? So my freshman year was, so it was supposed to be uh, Jarrell Andrews. But he got mm -hmm. just couple. So he ended up having to go to a different school, but it, it was De David Lojeski, yeah, uh, Matt Lojeski's little brother, mm -hmm. that was the same mm -hmm. cat, mm -hmm. uh, Marcus Ward, Daryl Clark. Uh, we had a, a vet point, or like a senior point guard, Andy Cohen. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a lot of older dudes. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I, I kind of had to like fight my way. And to be honest with you, I didn't even start on varsity. <laughs> Like, uh, no, like I, I ended up starting on varsity, but okay, I was gonna say because I remember you coach, late, later on down. Okay, okay, coach T knew all the hype of me coming into Horley, 
Mm. This is why I respected him so much. He was like, I'm not giving it to you. You got to work your way from the freshman court to the JV court. And if you get off them and you get to our court, then oh. okay, so be it. Okay. Okay. So I think the first two days of tryouts, they moved me from the freshman court to the JV court. Mm -hmm. And so the rest of the week, I'm on the JV team. So I'm, mm -hmm. all right, cool. I'm a freshman. I'm going to be on JV, whatever, right. this, that, or whatever. The, uh, I think like two days before the first game, one of the senior starters get in trouble at a house party or something like that. Just got in trouble mm -hmm. or right. whatever. Got a ticket or something, got in trouble. Right. So his punishment was like a three game suspension, like you couldn't play from Coach mm -hmm. T. And in that time, I didn't find out until the day of the first game. Coach T was like, "Well, so and so had a little addition, a little issue or whatever. So you gonna suit up with varsity tonight?" I said, "So mm -hmm. am I still playing JV or mm -hmm. no?" He was like, "No, like you just gonna suit up on varsity." So I'm like, "I'm just gonna suit up. I'm not thinking anything of it. I don't know no plays, whatever this that, and the third. But I've never been a dummy. Like, you draw it down, this, that, whatever. I'll get it. I'll right. figure it out. You'll figure it out, right. And sure enough, like, halfway through the first quarter, threw me in the fire. And at that point, I never looked back. So here you are, freshman, yep. 14 years old, 15 years old at that point in time, playing a grown man game now, right? You are playing amongst 17, 18-year-olds, so sure. a little bit older than you. Yep. And the way that you got introduced to the high school game in, in that fashion, what was the jitters? Did you have any jitters going into it? What was you, what were you thinking at this point in time? Because you would you think that at that point in time as a freshman, that you would want the freshman to be prepped as much as possible. Right, 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 right. right? So I think I think what kind of like prepped me or whatever for it was the fact that I felt like I earned it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I, he made me go from freshman to JV, the varsity court. Um, and there's just a simple fact, on the AAU circuit, you know what I'm saying? Like, no knock on Wisconsin basketball. You know, when I played, it was really good basketball. But some of them dudes that you playing from Cali, you playing from Texas. You playing it's different. From it's, di it's just you, different. Yeah, it's just different. You're not seeing that in Wisconsin. I'm sorry. Right. It just right. is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. the type of athletes that come out of Florida, even Chicago, like, you don't see that in Wisconsin. So I felt like the work that I had put in up to that point, the people that I faced against up into that point, like I felt like it wasn't anybody going to be head and shoulders above them. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I could always hold my own. And then once I got out there and I showed that I could, it went from now not just holding your own, but Millie, at some point in the time, like you're going to be the best player on this floor at all times. And then, mm -hmm. so when it went from holding your own to now prove that you're the best player on this floor night in and night out, it, it, it all just clicked from there. It was that, did, did you, did you feel like, or did you become the best player um, during your freshman season? I think towards the end of it, towards, towards the end, end of it, because when I got hurt, the end of my freshman year, I fractured at my ankle bone. Mm, okay. My left ankle, right before sectionals. Mm. And when I seen the panic in the coaching staff, in the school, like people were like, oh, you're going to be all right, though, this, that, whatever. Mm -hmm. When I seen that, it kind of gave me, like, all right. Got like, you. Yeah. Everyone's relying on you. It's not right. just, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's right. people that just coming to the games, like teachers are like, hey, you, you'll be all right for sectionals or whatever and stuff like that. So once that, once I kind of got that outside reassurance that like people- It was kind of like a battery in your like, back? Yeah, it was just like, all right, like this this is yours. Like this is yours now. Like the keys are yours. So uh, that's when I kind of felt like I ascended to be like, all right, this is this is now my team. So did you sit out? Were you, were you um, eligible to play or not eligible, but were you healthy enough to play um, AAU that summer? So I, I did play AAU that summer. I ended up playing the sectional game. We ended up losing our, actually our in-town, cross-town rival, Racine Park. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up playing maybe like five minutes in the fourth quarter. Like, because when I say I couldn't really move or anything, my ankle was the size of, of like a softball. It was crazy. Okay. Like, yeah, 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 for sure. It was wild. And I had it taped and I had an ankle brace on it. It was more so just kind of like 
one of those motivational things like, hey, we throw Jamil in there, like maybe the right. team and you know, whatever. But um, so I ended up after that, I ended up going to the doctor and I ended up doing like uh, therapy for my ankle. And um, I, I I had a great summer that set me up for my sophomore year when I actually started to excel in everything at that point. Mm -hmm. OK, so who did you play AU with? So it was crazy because I, I would play. So Karan Butler had a has a program, the Racing Heat. Mm -hmm. So I was playing with them. And I remember, I, I've, I'll never forget it. We played at Hillside in mm. uh, Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my pops and Brian Jonik and B, they almost mm -hmm. got into it. Like they almost got into a fight because my pops is coaching my team. And B yeah, is yeah, sure. the running rebels at this point. Got you. Got you. Okay. So B is trying to accuse my dad of having too many exemptions or whatever. Or somebody said it under whatever. They brought it to B and B brought it to my dad. Right. And my dad's from the islands, you know. My dad's Jamaican. Like he don't right. he don't play with all that. Right, right, <laughs> so right, right. So they they kind of got into a heated debate about it. But it smoothed out because my dad said one thing. He's like, if 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 there's anything. If we have any exemption of anything wrong, it's my son, and he's younger. Like he's in the fourth grade playing up in the or or what was it? He's in yeah, he's in the fourth grade playing in the fifth grade, mm. and they were like, he's like what? He's like my son. Like he's in the fourth grade playing fifth grade, mm -hmm. and B's like, well, my whole team is in the fourth grade and we playing up. Mm -hmm. so from that, all the high intensity or everything killed from yeah, there because yeah, they yeah, both sure. had a they both came to the same realization like well if your boys play like this right my son is whatever just get them together right so my oh family, okay yeah so my mother my mother her parents are from Milwaukee mm -hmm. so I was in the next seven eight summers in Milwaukee I have a grandma and grandpa's house and I'm playing with the rebels so I played with the rebels. And then we changed our name to where we went to playground. Right. So I played with, with some playground. So I so I from fifth grade to the end of my AU career, I played with the running rebels and, and then Wisconsin Playground when we all when we merged with Fox Valley Skills. Okay. Was now was was money was money over the uh, playground at this point in time? Uh yeah, I think so. Okay. I think so. it was him and Richie Davis kind of got together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. Yep. Okay. Um all right, so going into your sophomore season, yeah, are the keys? Did they hand the keys over to you at this point in time? Keys are mine. Keys are mine. I I, I had a sit down with Coach T, and he talked about it, and he was like, pretty much like this program pretty much follows you, and we're only gonna go as far as like you want us to go or you feel that we could go. And I think my sophomore year at Horlick. My cousin ended up from Tennessee, ended up moving up to Racine with his pops. Left mm -hmm. him, uh, and he was like 6'10". So I think that year, my sophomore year, we ended up losing maybe three or four games in the state of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So like at that point, like he just gave me direction. Like it's, it's, it's for you to take us where you feel like we should be. You know what I'm saying? And so when he put that kind of like responsibility on me, I became the guy that was the voice outside of him to get on other people or just push other people or gotcha. just breathe You're the life coach on the floor. The, yeah, breathe life into we, we can make it upstate. You know what I'm saying? We can bring the gold ball home, stuff like that. So Okay. Um are you and and at this point in time, your sophomore season, is this where you see because we previously spoke on this, so I just want to bring it back full circle. Is this where this is where you're starting to see the separation? Yeah, this is this this is this is exactly where I start to see the separation because at this point I'm starting to see double teams, boxes mm -hmm. and ones, mm -hmm. um uh face guard me when I don't even when I'm passing a ball in and yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, so I'm I'm starting to see all these things, but I'm still averaging 19 plus, eight plus mm -hmm. rebounds, like four or five plus assists, like I'm still effective. So I'm like, if this is you're like, you're going to this extent to try and, you know, detain me or whatever, and I can still win. And it's I not working. Win. Yeah. It's not working. I can still impact my team. My guys can still get off. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, 
that's when I started to see what I'm doing is all right. Like this, there's another level to this that clearly you you're reaching. Yeah. And other people aren't. Okay. Um, where are you drawing interest from at this point in time? I think my first offer, my first official offer was from Grambling, HBCU. It was okay. from Grambling. And I always, now it's starting to become a thing. My mom pledged uh, to a sorority. Um, mm -hmm. My little sister is a Delta. Okay. Um, I didn't know the history of it back then. But if I Got did, you. you know what I'm saying? Obviously that, like, I think my first two offers, honestly, was Grambling and then Morehouse. And oh, like, so two HBCU. Literally, okay. Literally. Like, those are my first mm -hmm. two. And I think it was, like, GB and then Wisconsin. Okay. And I think by the end of my sophomore year, that's when the floodgates just opened. It was Florida, USC. It was, you name it, I was getting mail from it and interest and phone calls. And at a point in time, I think my sophomore year, Bo Ryan and Thad Mata were at, they took turns for a week. They were at the school every other day. Thad Mata mm -hmm. showed up to my volleyball game because I played volleyball in high school. Thad Mata came that's to true, my that's volleyball true. game. Yeah, yeah, that's he came true, to my yeah. volleyball game. And I, <laughs> I was just like, oh, shit. This, right, right. This, this is, is crazy. This is you know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and I'll never forget the first time I seen Izzo. Like, I got a call out of class, like, hey, can you report to the Scarlet office, which was, like, mm -hmm. where my principal yeah. was. Principal, yeah. And, and Izzo is just sitting in there, and I'm like, oh, what's up? <laughs> like, what's, mm -hmm. going, what's going mm -hmm. on? You called the boy out of class for this. But, like, uh, by the end of my sophomore season, I was getting mail and interest from, from everywhere to the point where, like, my mailman – told my dad one day, like, hey, can he hurry up and pick a school? Because I'm tired of delivering all this stuff. Oh, so, that's funny. Nah, it was crazy. But <laughs> like, that's like that, that year kind of just opened up the floodgates for me. So so as a sophomore, now, you know, you're 16, 16 years old and things. Yeah. So what 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 is, like, what the hysteria that is going on around you during this point in time? Yeah. Mentally, what is that doing to you? I mean, it, it's it's kind of at at one point it's it's kind of scary, but at mm -hmm. the same time it's it's exhilarating because like right. you go to away schools and you know that they're gonna boo you and this that and whatever. But before the game, they show you so much love. Like right. I'm sitting in the stands with the homies. I'm signing little dudes as like hot dog trays and little paper trays and, and shirts and stuff like. Yeah. You know, so all of that is like surreal. Like I'm a 16 year old kid and like you want my autograph and all this other stuff. And as soon as the game goes, though, like it switches and boom, like you're all yeah. ready. You suck. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So at the same time, it, it was scary. But like I said, at the same time, it's exhilarating. And it could be a lot because at times we would play in places like Mosquito or Burlington. And at, mm. at that point, it don't, it's not who. Anymore, it's more like personal. It's like, yeah, for sure. You know, th those insults cut deep. They, stuff it's a little different, it's, you know. Especially in like in Waterford and stuff like yep. that. Like, yeah, it's a little it, different. It yeah, it ain't no longer like, oh, um, oh, you stuck and overrated. It's like, uh, it's the N words and yeah, all types of stuff coming up. N word, yeah. and yeah. I, I'll never forget my pops uh, walking out into the floor in Muskego because they called us monkeys. See. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So um, it, it, it was a it was a surreal time for me. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, like kids are asking for my autographs and things like that. So that's super cool. That's super dope. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm doing it with the people I came up with. So like they can see I ain't changed and we all in this together. But then at the same time, like I said, when that ball go ups and everything switches, it's just like, mm -hmm. damn, like, dude, I yeah. just signed your shirt. Right. You right. Give me the bird. Like, what's up? <laughs> Not for sure. For you know sure. So, so accolades that you received after your sophomore year, what did you what did you um, receive as far as accolades for high school? Uh, I think I made all state from my sophomore year to my senior year. I think all state my sophomore year. I think I was actually I think I was first team. So I think I was first team, or maybe second team my sophomore year, junior and senior year. I was first team all state. Uh, you were, what was you 31 in the country right in uh your senior season right in the country overall and then six no i would i would know 
I was 30 in the country overall, six in my position. That's six in your position. Something like that. Okay. Then, um, <clears throat> I want to just look up something. I mean, we can, we, we can still talk. I'm just yeah, looking up something I real think quick. My junior and senior year, like I said, all state, and then I think I got all county, obviously in racing, and I think I got play, I got player to you in my junior year and my senior year, um, and uh, and all uh, player to county, player whatever, player to year in the county, and then the only thing I missed out on was Mister Basketball to my boy Jerome. Uh, yeah, you yeah. was you was runner up, weren't you? Yep, runner up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I want to share something with you real quick, because as I'm looking at it right here, right, right. so we had, and I just want to go over the people that were in this class, so people get an idea of what was going on, right? Ooh, so, look yeah, at that. Andrew, Derek Favors, Xavier Xavier Henry, Xavier, Xavier Henry, yeah, man, he was, it's, oh, it's, he was an animal, man. Man, he, he was, was good, man. I'd never forget the day they thumped this one day. They thumped us. It was him. Tyrone Boyd, the other buddy that went to Oklahoma, Daniel Orton. Mm-hmm. Man. Look at this. Lance Stevenson was on here. I'm Demarcus sorry. Cousins. Mason John Plummer. Wall, John Henson. Yeah. Come on, man. Bill That's Wilson, funny. 31, right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So did you did you get invited to the All-American game? So I got invited to Jordan brand. I didn't get invited to McDonald's. Okay. Okay, I'm just I'm just briefly going over this. Yeah, our class was loaded, man. If you just super loaded, that, our class was loaded. Super loaded. Chris Middleton was in there too. Right, exactly. I think Kawhi's yeah. in there somewhere too, if I'm not mistaken. Look, Is he? Ray, oh, oh yeah, oh nine, right? You would think. I think Kawhi was oh nine. Let's see. Yeah, Kawhi was my year. I think, if I'm not mistaken, was he oh nine or was he oh? Yeah, he yeah, might, there he is, right there, fifty six. Yeah. Fifty six. Solomon oh, Hill, um, bro. Mike Moser, cut. yeah, man, man, bro. Loaded. My class was loaded. loaded, man. Travis Ware, both the Ware twins. Eric Murphy, yeah. that was at Florida. Six twenty, shoot it. Royce White, Christian Royce White was a problem. Yeah, he was, man. Peyton Siva, at Iowa State. Peyton Siva, come on, man. Yeah. With him and uh, Russ Smith did at Louisville. Come on, man. Dude. Kenny Boyton. Oh man. What I'm saying, man. Class yeah, was loaded, loaded. Dude. John Henson, come on, dude. Right, right. Like I said, Derek Favors. You got Mark Demarcus Cousins, John Wall. So what? What? What was the ultimate um, reason or decision to to lead you towards uh, Oregon? So I, I was talking about this previously. So after everything that was going on in my life, you know what I'm saying, I didn't make a basketball decision to go to Oregon. I made a life decision, something that felt comfortable for me because mm. losing my mom and facing all this stuff and, you know, criticism and ridicule every day we lose, win, this, that, whatever, just all the pressures that was on kind of like my shoulders, I kind of wanted to get as far away as I could. It was either like mm. Oregon or Hawaii or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Or like Texas. But I mean, on my official visit to Texas, I figured out I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to make it there. Like, not because I couldn't make it hoop-wise or anything like that. It's just I knew myself at 18. I knew the everything that Texas offered off the floor. Oh, Austin, yeah, huge, Austin, yeah. Huge. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, yeah. I experienced Sixth Street for the first time at 18, and I was, like, eyes wide open. Like, right. yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I made a decision based on something to kind of get myself in tune with who I was becoming, everything that I had gone through. And honestly, Oregon was kind of the, the best decision for me. Nature, green, like super, super friendly people, a, like a crazy basketball culture in the Pac-10 at the time. You know what I'm saying? You got the Arizonas, Washingtons, UCLA, UC, USC, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I, I made a decision based on life, like where I was going and what I kind of needed to embrace everything that I had been through. And Can I, honest, um, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, if, to be honest with you, if... Uh, Ernie Kent would have never got fired. I probably mm -hmm. would have stayed at Oregon. Like I probably never transferred to Marquette. Can I? Can we? Um, there's a rumor okay. that one of the reasons why you ended up at Oregon was because of okay. Alex Scales too. 
Uh, so me and Scales briefly talked before I went there, but the main reason that I ended up at Oregon was Yasir Rosen. Mm. Yeah, and out. So Yah is like my like a big brother to me, and he's got been a big brother to me since I've been like fifteen. You know okay. Saying? So I seen Yah at Peach Jam. Okay, in Georgia, and I'm yep. like I'm warming up, you no know, layups or whatever, and I do a layup, and he's standing under the goal, and I'm like, yo, what you doing here? This that whatever. He's like, man, I'm checking on you. Like, how you doing? Like, what's going on with you? And I'm like, man, I'm good. You know, what I'm saying I'm. You know, hoping, just trying to make it to whatever. I said, but why are you here? Like, and why you got right. this weak ass polo on? And he turned and it's got an O on it. Mm. And I'm like, he's like, yeah, I coached there now. Oh, wow. And right then and there, the seed was planted. You know what I'm saying? Got you. Because, like I said, I'm big with loyalty, trust, mm. family, stuff like that. And if I'm going somewhere and I can trust somebody, cool. And then, like, shortly after that, I was introduced to Kenny Payne. Who's mm. another black coach? Mm -hmm. And then I found out Ernie Ken is the head coach, and that's another right. black coach. And I'm another just black like, coach, yeah. Yeah. So it was Ernie Kent, Kenny Payne, Yasir Roseman, and then Mike Dunlap, whose credentials oh, speak wow. for themselves. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So yeah. I felt like I had a pretty good coaching staff that could take me to where I wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. um, so obviously I but I took my visits, I was still open, you know what I'm saying? And, and stuff like that, but um, it, it was all about trust and whatever for me. But honestly, and, and I, I say this, and I say it openly, I can say it now. My basketball decision, if I were to make a basketball decision, me and my father talk about it all the time. We agree on it. My basketball decision, if I were to make one, is I was going to Michigan State. Hands down. Is um, yeah. Not even close. Not yeah. even close. Um, Not to go off track and, and to bring another one interviewing here, uh, Corey Lucius said that's the best decision he ever made. No question. And no he said question. he regret, you know, of course, the unfortunate dismissal sure. and all that stuff. For sure. He For said sure. He, For sure. I talked to Corey on a consistent basis, and he he talked to me all the time about how he regret that. Because <laughs> he was saying how much of a father figure Izzo was. Man, it is crazy. Like the so when I took my official, Corey was my chaperone or my or my whatever. Oh wow, my, okay. Okay. I got yeah. like he he's yeah. got to keep me around. So I'm kicking it in the dorm with Corey. So I just want Corey, Dre, Chris Allen. Like, I'm around all these dudes. The love that Izzo shows his players mm -hmm. is so genuine. Like, no string. I don't want nothing from you. I just want you to be the best version of yourself inside these lines and outside these lines. The night that I went to Izzo's crib for dinner, like they have you over for dinner, usually people, like, cater something or this, that, whatever. No, Izzo's wife is in the kitchen cooking homemade, mm -hmm. authentic Italian cuisine, everything from mm -hmm. meatballs, the pasta, this, that, whatever. Like the way he embraces people and shows you, like, you will be taken care of here. Like, you will be friendly. I would treat you like you are. That's so of funny, bro. I always say if I had a son and he was good enough to play basketball, I would send him to Izzo. And I'll you, always say that. And you would not be wrong. I'll, I'll tell you a thousand times over, you would not be wrong. Like Izzo shows, and the thing about it is he's going to, your son is going to be a better basketball player at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. When right. he gets to campus and whenever he leaves, whether it's one year, two years, three years, he's going to be a better basketball player. But at the end of the day, he's going to be a better man because he's and big that's on what everybody character. Says, that's what yes, that's what I'm saying. He's big on character and values and respect and this, that, whatever. So, I, like I said, me and my father talk about it all the time. Like, my basketball decision was Michigan State. I had the time of my life there. I loved the dudes. You know what I'm saying? I loved the campus. It was still close to home. Pops can still get there, this, that, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And not to mention the Big Ten, like the brand of basketball. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Yeah. And what Izzo yeah. was doing in the Big Ten at that time, yeah. think about it. If I go there, there's a final for my freshman year. Just speaking on what they did. No, no, for sure. There's a final four my second year. Yeah. Yeah. Take it out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So and, uh, and not to mention you 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 are guaranteed to make it to the tournament every single every year. year. You're making it You're making every it. year. He gonna mm -hmm. find a way to his team in the tournament. And that's when he's the crazy thing about it, his teams are the most dangerous. They can have yeah, the most sure. up and down year as it is. But once that March Madness theme song play, <laughs> Bro, it, I'm telling you, you're you gonna make it. So yeah, for sure, uh, for sure. But no, oh. I, uh, I still have mad love and respect for Izzo, man.
That's dope. That's dope. So you get out to Oregon. Yeah. Freshman year in college. You step into this, 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 this different type of basketball. I don't want to say um, this different type of basketball quality. Yeah. When it comes to the traveling, when it comes to the locker rooms, right, right, the, right. The, the the treatment that you have. Mm-hmm. What is going through Jamil's mind as you're stepping into Oregon? And not to mention, see, Oregon would be a dream for me because I'm a Nike dude. Same here. <laughs> see what I'm saying? So what is going through your mind during this time? So it's crazy because it's like you get there and you see all the facilities. You see all mm-hmm. the gear. You see all mm-hmm. everything else. Like I had a Nike light bulb, like a lamp. Like it was crazy. Like it was a swoosh light bulb. Like it, it, it was wow. insane. So like you see all this stuff and coming from where, oh, I gotta save this to make sure I get my basketball sneakers for this season. Not for sure. Yeah, for sure. And now I open my locker and I got four pair of track shoes and I got however many pair of basketball shoes and I got however many dry fits, however many shorts and, and a plethora of socks. Like, it's like crazy, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and um, but I think my introduction to it was wild because like when I got there, I think maybe like the second or third day I got there, it was a Saturday. I won't forget, <laughs> I'll never forget this. So uh, KP, Kenny Payne, he calls mm-hmm. me and I'm chilling just like I am now. And I see my phone ring and I'm like, I ain't gonna answer that. It's Saturday, Saturday morning, I ain't answering that shit. Like, man, I'll right. talk to you. Right, so I'll talk to you in a minute. Yeah, right. yeah, so I'll talk to you in a minute. So I, he called me again. So I'm like, some just like, Millie, peek out the blinds, like, see what's up. Like, he might be at the door. I peek out the blind and I see his Tahoe sitting outside. And then I, a text pop up, I seen you open the blinds, come outside. So I'm like, all right, so I go outside. And he was like, I'm going to take you to the gym. We're going to get your running shoes. We're going to go hit the hill. I'm like, the hill? Like, yo, it's Saturday. Like, I, I've been working out since I got here. Like, two days. Like, I don't get this Saturday off? Like, all right, cool. So we go to this hill. And it's this famous trail that Steve Prefontaine used to run. Famous Oregon running. Mm-hmm. One part, I guess it's like the end of his run is like this crazy hill. Like, it's like it goes up, like, gradually. And then it mm-hmm. like hits a turn and then it's like super steep. And so the hill, we had we ran 10 of them, or we had to run 10 of them, or 10 of them was on the schedule. Mm-hmm. 10 of them weren't on the schedule for me. I ain't gonna lie to you. Three days, <laughs> in. <laughs> Three days in, 10 of them weren't on the schedule. Right, right. Um, and plus their time. So me, it's mm-hmm. me, Jay Singer, Josh Criddle, Mike Dunnigan, and I want to say Tiandre Williams. So okay. Josh and Mike from Chicago, Tiandre from Atlanta, and EJ is hometown, home fed, Oregon kid. Mm. Yeah. Um, so we running them and we running them in ours. So it's time. So the big fellas, Mike and Josh, I think they got like 63, 64 seconds. Tiandre mm. got like 55. And then me and EJ is right in the middle, like 56, 57, like to make it up. Like this is how big this heel is. Okay. So oh, 50. Wow. Okay. Yes. Shit. To get up it, and then wow. the time okay. to walk down it, you you walk down it, and then I think you got after you walk down it, you yell, and you got thirty seconds before you got to go again. So I think we got to like five, five or six, and I get to the top, and I tell KP like, "Hey man, I don't know about these other ones. Like I'm just be honest with you. Like I yeah for sure. I ain't really eat nothing this morning. Like I wasn't prepared yeah. to do this. Like mentally, whatever. Like he's like, you'll be fine." So I think I get to seven and I get to seven. And I, I sit down at the top of the hill and I lay back, just breathing. I bullshit you not. The next time, like I'm, I'm thinking I'm just laying out for like 30 seconds. I get up, they're done. They've done 10 hills. They did the last three while I've just been laying on the ground. Wow. <laughs> did you lose consciousness or would you just out? I, don't think like, I, I think I was just like out. I think I was just like in a, I think I was just in a daze, like yeah, body. yeah, for sure. Because I mean, I worked out as a kid in high school. I, I mean, but I you, mean, you're not used to this shit. I'm you're not, not used to this, this. and yeah, you gotta yeah. think about it. So I'm in summer school, so I got class, I got weights, I got workout. Then we got individuals practice, whatever. 
and then some extra shit that I'm getting in on the top, on the back end. So yeah. I got two days of that. And then you wake me up on my Saturday morning. But, where I, but he's I'm, prepping you to be a pro. He's, he's that's prepping you to be. So yeah. that's when it came to me, like, yo, it's dudes out here doing this on a regular. You this shit is for real. Like, separating themselves. Like, nah, for sure. Now I that level that I felt like I was transcending to from my sophomore year to whatever, I thought I was now at this point, I'm like, instead of transcending, I'm like ascending, like I'm going down mm -hmm. because the gap is I'm not used to doing what these dudes are doing. Like now oh, so. I've went down. Now I have to figure out how to get back to where I was because even the workouts, the night workouts with uh, Yasir or, or Yah or KP, like, I'm like, dude, yeah. they, they're, not, they're not makes. No, no, uh, Millie, we need seven makes in a row from this spot. Mm -hmm. However many makes in a row from this spot. Mm -hmm. If you miss two in a row, you got to go all the way back to the beginning type thing. And I'm just like, yeah. nah, this is bro. shit. This is pro. This, this is real. Yeah. Like, this, not, yeah, like sure. nah, bro. Like, I missed two. Like, so what? Like, I'm at right. six. I missed two. I'm getting to seven. Like, no, nah. you're not only clearing that spot, you're going back to three spots before that. And, and you start moving. Like, yeah, sure. this, this shit threw me in like a spiral. Because <laughs> I'm like, right. I'm used to... But they're uh, checking your mental for, your, your your mental and exactly. your testicular fortitude. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Exactly. So they're like, are you going to quit? You're going to keep... So obviously you push through them. And, you know, I got through the year and I ended up transferring. But all of that comes full circle. Because I swear, when I got my release from Oregon... And I signed my NLI to Marquette. Me and all, this all happened at the same day. Me and my pops go meet with Buzz. Okay. First 20 minutes of the meeting, I'm not there. Buzz is strictly talking to my pops. The mm -hmm. first thing he says to me, I don't have one. But he picked up a bottle. He had a Gatorade bottle on his desk. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know what you are to me? And I'm like, I look at my dad I'm like, you know, I'm. Like a, you know, another player, like, you know, a guy, right, like a sure. he grabs a bottle and he sets it in front of him. And he's like, no, this is you. And I'm like, what the fuck? Right. Yeah. What's going on? I'm like, what you talking about? Right. Like, what are you talking? So I'm looking at my dad, like and my dad's looking at me, like, talk to him. And mm -hmm. he was like, this is you. He was like, and this is me. I'm my hand. He said, every day I'm going to smack this bottle over. He said, I'm going to hit it over every day. He's like, because I want to see what pours out of you. Mm. When everything's going wrong when you're back against the wall you can't make a shot you tired you fatigue your teammates hate you because you ain't this that whatever i want to see what comes out of you every day and the, the first thing i thought of with that was me running that hill oh that's me dope again, like fuck. that's dope i don't want to be in that position no more so i don't want to be in that position asshole. again you know what i'm saying yeah. so yeah. i'm like maybe this is the right decision i made you know what i'm saying because i got someone that's gonna like Put it in no put his foot day. in your ass. Yeah, exactly. Every day, every day, yeah, and sure. don't lie. Every day, and even so my redshirt year, it was crazy. You th yeah. you would have thought I was playing thirty minutes a night the way he was That's coaching me my redshirt year. It's two. It's two questions I want to ask you, mm -hmm. um, and it's a follow up. So first of all, okay. I know you mentioned that you 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 ended up transferring because yeah. uh, Ernie Kent got got fired. Correct. The whole coaching staff got fired. Okay, so that was more so the reason. Yeah, that was more so the reason why you transferred. Yeah. My first question is: at that point in time, would you know in Michigan State would have been your basketball choice? Why didn't you transfer to Michigan State? You know what? Because at that point, so so this is the underlying truth about why I went to Marquette. So when my mom was still here with us on Earth, she was a huge Cream fan. She loved oh. cream. Loved gotcha. cream. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? And so um after she passed, that kind of just kind of took Marquette off the board for me. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I knew like this is where she wanted me to be and this and whatever. And it would bring up too many feelings and whatever. And the moment that I got home, I sent all my stuff home from Oregon. And my dad, we had he gave me like a week and we had a conversation. And he was like, well, do you want to go back? And I'm like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? They had just hired Dana Allman, who's a great you're coach. You're talking about going back to uh, – just for, for the fans, you're talking about going, going back to Oregon. Going back to Oregon, yep. He's okay. like, do you okay. want to go back? 
And I'm like, you know, I don't know. I don't really know the guy. But Dana Altman, I, I grew to learn him because I would go back to Oregon to see uh, my girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so he would let me work out with the team. I'm talking about weights, individuals, play pickup. So like he, him, Coach Fishburn, Tony Stubblefield, like they, they were all there. They were all great dudes. They embraced me. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, even though I had just left them. So that said so much about their character. So it made me think like, maybe I should have stayed. You know what I'm saying? Like right. maybe I should have given this a chance. If it doesn't work out, transfer, you still got two years, you know, type deal. Um, mm -hmm. But me and my dad, we had the conversation and I'm like, man, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Like my first freshman year didn't really go as, as I thought it was going to go. I'm I'm looking to kind of just solidify myself and get back to, you know, how I play the game of ball. And my dad kind of was like, well, do you want to come home? Mm. I'm like, home? And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, well, you know, I'm pretty sure like a couple of schools around here would be, you know, accepting of you if that's something you wanted to do. So he let me sleep on it for like two days. And then he was like, well, I know Tony Benford. Mm. So my dad got in contact with Tony Bifford and kind of told him the situation. And Bifford kind of told my dad, like, look, if he want to leave and come here, we'll take him. Like, right. no ways, hands, and butts, we'll take him. Like, right. he ain't got to jump through no hurdles or nothing. If he gets his release from Oregon, we'll take him. And I like, remember I remember how how much of a big deal that was, too. Listen. Like, it was, it was a huge deal. It was a huge deal. I got my release at 10 a.m. from Oregon. Mm -hmm. By 4 p.m., I was signed to go to Marquette. The, the news and the news outlets at that point in time, like it was like the shit I was hearing around the area, it was going crazy. It was it was crazy. It, it was, it was wild. And I didn't think that it was gonna pick up traction like that. Like yeah. I, I figured it Journal Times, yeah, or you know, the Milwaukee Sentinel, you might catch yeah. it on Fox Four, like, oh, like local returns mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. But the way it was like, like it was like wildfire. It was one of those things where it was it was probably one of like the days it felt like a day where I was playing the NCAA WA tournament when we won and you got to sit your phone down after the game because there's so many oh, notifications yeah. and people are calling and it's like I had reporters calling like oh why like trying to figure out why did you transfer this down whatever I had my my homies like oh you back in the you know what I'm saying like it was mm -hmm. just it was too much to the point where I had to put my phone down and like step away for a, a day or so so I want to stay there real quick, but my second question is, you no, know well, let me let me ask the first question first because this is going to segue until into your uh, market career. Right. So my, my 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 the question that I that I want to ask before I get to the market career is, you coming back home? Did you did you feel a sense of pressure or any type of distractions or anything like that? Uh, I would say I felt pressure. Okay. I was I would say I felt pressure because the last time that I hooped at hooped in Milwaukee at, actually at the Al McGuire Center we played mm -hmm. in like the Christmas tournament and I I forget who we in, I, I think we played Nicolette or we played somebody at the Al and we ended up smacking them mm -hmm. right before that I remember Boogie DeMarcus Cousins his team from Alabama had came up and I think they played either Vincent nope or Pius. Pius. That's what it was. Yeah. They played Pius. They played Pius. They played Corey yeah. now. It was yeah, they played Corey now. So, mm -hmm. so that was the last time I've kind of like, and that was like my senior year. That was the last time I kind of like played, you know what I'm saying, in mm -hmm. that area. So I kind of felt like they're expecting what you gave them the last time. You back at oh. home, you comfortable. Like this is like, you got to pick right back up where whatever. And they're not knowing that you're going into a system now. It's That's different. what I'm saying. And, yeah, and for the sure. Thing of, but I always say that Buzz kind of turned me into a, a winner, like a mm -hmm. like a real win, like a winner. Like I'm gonna teach you how to win the game, how to be impactful, gotcha. how gotcha. to see plays and this, that, and whatever, or whatever. So that program took the focus off of more so me being me. Mm -hmm. oh, I can do this. I can do that. I do that. Oh, I'm gonna just do a little bit of everything. I'm gonna be kind of like a Swiss Army knife, and I'm gonna make sure I win. Like I'm one of the most winningest players. I think Buzz told me when I was leaving. I'm like one of the most winning, or I share it's a crazy amount of win shares at Marquette, since, like in the tenure of me being there. So, uh, but no, that was one of the things that 
amounted to the pressure. Like everyone's expecting to see what they seen two years ago. But now it's an entirely different system and Buzz runs his program a certain way. So I would even get, I would even get people hit me up like, damn, you ain't even the same no more. Like you don't even get to it like you used to. Yeah. But that's them not understanding what what it all went into it. Exactly. And they don't understand, like they just they just see what you did in high school. And right. as far as like you dominating the game in high school, not knowing now you're in a system, it's entirely different. Right. Like it's almost like the point where you see a lot of these. That's why I always say when people think that they can beat a, a pro basketball player, you know you can't. Go to sleep. They are doing this because this is their yeah. job. The job. It's a difference. It's, 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 this it's, is their it's, job. It's, this is what they have to do. This if is they get your ass on the court, yeah. one-on-one, yeah. on one, you're going to get destroyed. You can't beat this person. It's this different. Put, and and it, it reminds me of the stuff I see all the time because – I has actually just seen a clip of Max Struess from the Heat going mm-hmm. crazy or something, and it was like just your average remind, just your friendly reminder that your average NBA player can come to your hood and be LeBron and destroy something, and and that and that's what it is. Like this is how I put food on the table, like <laughs> kind of like Brian Scalabrini. I remember exactly. that he was doing like a Brian Ca- killing them high school kids, doing them. a challenge, destroying them, and they, them. they couldn't figure out like how, how he was this good. I'm just like, bro, listen. He's only one of 400 people, 450 people that's in the NBA. A elite, a top He will come man. to your spot and destroy you. Y'all got to give it up. Leave these dudes alone, man. What are you looking for? And, and Leave that's these dudes alone. Man, and, and, and it's crazy because obviously, I, you know, you hear people say it. And, and even that you hear it about dudes that go overseas and they play high-level Euro League, Euro Cup, this, that, whatever. Oh, you can't come back. No, no. I, I'm gonna come back here and do the exact same thing, exact and it's gonna get thing. worse. You know what I'm saying? Right, it's like, gonna get worse. yeah, like it's gonna get worse. the separation is so from it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. To pro is oh, it's it's, it's, it's disgusting. It's disgusting, and, and, and people don't understand it, and so it, it becomes amusing at a point. Like, no, nah, for sure, that you think you can stand on the same court as us, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna show yeah. you. It's, it's one of them you. moments. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'll, show uh, I'll show you. I'm gonna show you. Buzz Williams boot camp. Talk to me. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, talk to me. And the reason why I, I asked that is because I've interviewed several Marquette alumni in the past, including your cousin, Bikes. Talk to me about Buzz Williams boot camp. I want to see if this story is consistent from, from, is, from, from everybody. It is. Boot camp is. It's hell on wheels, man. It's hell in casting. Like, 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 like that. That's the only way I can explain it. AC, there's no, bo- there's no basketball in a gym. That, the, only, see, the only ball is in the gym is a football. Yeah. And the only reason the football is in the gym is why you do your two minute Indian run to warm up after stretching. Buzz likes to be QB one from the Dallas Cowboys and mm-hmm. throw the ball to people. Like that's now we ain't gonna say the Cowboys. We'll say another team. Nah, we'll you, you know, he 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 a Texas yeah, nah, nah. guy, so that's that's yeah, that's, I know. yeah, that's yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. But for sure. like, there's no ball in the gym. And yeah. the crazy thing about it is the first session of boot camp starts at like seven fifteen. Mm-hmm. The last session of boot camp starts at five oh three or some mm. odd time like that. So mm. every session, the time gets earlier and earlier and earlier, and as the times get earlier, the sprints. We get there's more and more sprints. There's more, yeah. more there's more stations. There's now there's weight vests. Now there's yeah. weighted balls for rim touches. Now there's like I would try and tell dudes and warn dudes, but by the time I got to my junior year, I started telling dudes, don't even worry about it. Cause they nah, shit you can do to prepare for you, it, right? you cannot prepare. I tell people, I tell people all the time, I'm thankful Marquette didn't have a football team. Like we didn't have a football stadium. Cause if we mm-hmm. did, I couldn't be imagine working. the shit that he would come up with for us to do. Like it was Yo Miller, you know how I feel, bro, when you when when you bikes, uh Dwayne, when y'all talk about this, I feel like I'm y'all therapist because it's bro, y'all bro, it's it, like it's traumatizing, dog. That <laughs> let me see, bro. 
I, I, I swear, I swear yeah. on my son, you know, <laughs> I ran through in one year of boot camp. I busted through two pair of Nikes, bro. I'm talking about the soul completely gone from the bottom. Jimmy, his senior year, put his foot through his shoe. Mm. Check this out. Put his foot through his sneaker on the sprint, right? And Jimmy mm -hmm. didn't miss very many sprints. Like, that's right. just who he was. No, he's he just a competitor, right, for sure, for sure. His foot went through his sneaker. It was his Jordan 2s. I'll never forget it, the baby blue ones. Went through mm. He didn't finish the sprint. Everyone else finished. Buzz knows if Jimmy doesn't blow his sneaker out, he finished this, the sprint. Mm -hmm. that, the sprint didn't count. Oh, we got to do it again. Because Jimmy busted through his joint. Because he busted through his uh -oh. sneaker. Oh, we're going to do it again. That one uh -oh. don't count. You got you to do it again. <laughs> I'm like, uh -oh. Jimmy ain't missed the sprint all, all boot camp. And he turned right. through his sneaker. And now... I said, we, oh, we all got to do it again. It oh, wow. Crazy. Yeah, this is different. It this is different. Crazy. And like the sprint lines, it was like the way you did it, it was like you and partners. So me and you on a line together. So and so. And like it's like four lines, four or five lines like this. And then it's like two or three solo lines. And they run the whole sprint by themselves. And the it's traumatizing. Like I hated every moment of boot camp. But honestly, it. He would always say, "This is where our team is going to be built," and it's yep. no further than the truth. Yep. Because in that moment, you have to figure out who can make these times together, who can't, who can run this by themselves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Who can we depend on? This, that, whatever. So, I hated it, bro. <laughs> I hated it, man. Like, no, nah, I get you. But something about it wasn't even nothing crazy. You got at the end. It wasn't like, oh, we're gonna take you to steak dinner or nothing like that. It was just like. The little flimsy T-shirt we got at the end was worth it. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, boot camp was man. It was it was it was crazy, man. It, it, and leading up to it, it started to get cold outside. You got to walk to the gym, it, man. Yeah, it's, sure. it's, sure. it's something that just stick with you, man, and you don't That's you don't crazy. forget that. So while you were at Marquette, your your mm -hmm. junior season, you averaged about ten points a game and five five rebounds, and then your senior season. You bumped it up a little bit to 12 points and about six rebounds. Um, how would you sum up your overall Marquette experience and career? My experience, it was great. I enjoyed my experience. You know, the people I met, you know what I'm saying, the professors, you know, uh, you know, my teammates, you know, being around, you know, other athletes, you know what I'm saying, um, they say, you know, college is like the only time where you're around so many people your age. You know what I'm saying? The experiences mm -hmm. I had, stuff like that, all the different people I met from different walks of life and stuff. So my experience was great. And plus, mm -hmm. I'm 30 minutes from the house. So right. if I'm hungry on the weekend, I ain't got nothing to eat, no money in my pocket, your pops. Right. Hungry, bro. Like, right. what you got to right. eat? What you got to eat, right? For sure. You know what I'm saying? He bring me something or I go down there. You know, the Greyhound bus was like three bucks to get there. So mm -hmm. uh, my career, I felt like I focus so much on us collectively and winning and getting to the tournament that I gave my, I put myself in the back seat you mm. know what I'm saying? because these same dudes that I was playing against are the same dudes I've been playing against my entire life. You know what I'm saying? I got better just like they got better. You know what I'm saying? Right. I got way better. And it wasn't until right. I turned into a pro that everything that I should have been doing in college really came to light. And you you would see it in flashes in college. Oh, he could run off this, this, that, and whatever. I remember we were in the Wooden Classic and we mm -hmm. were playing Kyle Fullerton. I think I had 24 at halftime. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you would see it in flashes. It's just I didn't consistently – I wasn't consistently that guy on the court because I wasn't so focused on myself but more so – our team success. And, and well, I mean, it's, and, and, and the college game, that's that's what it's more so... Yeah, geared towards. It's, it's, sure. it's based because, on it, right? Like, you get to show your individual success and your individual accolades once you reach the pro level, right. whether it's in, um, you know, right um, the Euro League or whatever the situation, right, that's right, where you right, right, shine sure. out of the pro. Right, no so... Um, do you... So... so 
would you would you consider this right your your, your college career would you change anything if you could no i I'm, I'm big on sticking to 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 your guns like i i love my college career and how it went i love that i made a life decision first to clear my mind i love that when I was ready to play ball and be myself again, I got the chance and the opportunity to play at home. Like my father never missed a home game. You know what I'm saying? That's like, dope. That's, that's dope. That's hard for me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like that's tough. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, he works all day and then 7 p.m. Sure enough, you know what I'm saying? I can see him up. Like that's tough to me. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I wouldn't change anything about it. Um, but if I had to, it would probably just change just my aggression. Got you. Of putting my imprint on the game, you know what I'm saying. Um, I, I want to get. To, I'm gonna get to something too. Um, that's that's a perfect. I'm glad that you mentioned that because sure. I definitely want to get to something, and I'm pretty sure that you may have heard this. Um, as when I mention it, it's probably gonna be like, yeah, I heard this before. For sure. Um, but before we get to your pro career, I, I got a couple of rapid fire questions for you. Got it. Um, favorite player of all time. All time. I might get a knock for this, but Grant Hill. Why would Grant, you get a knock? Grant Hill or Tracy McGrady? Grant Hill before the ankle injury, mm -hmm. T back before the back. Okay. Um, so wow, no Jordan. Jordan is like other you put him by himself? Yeah, Jordan's just like otherworldly for me. Like okay. the stuff he obviously we ride down the street in Milwaukee, Racine, nah, for sure. Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the stuff that I seen him do during the 90s when I'm Falling in love with the game is like, it's it's, it's over there by itself. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, there, there's only one person that has like an access to that area in his head. Right. So like, got you, got and, you. And Mike was always just like a different position than me. Like, I, yeah. I like guys that are more so in my life. Oh, I get you that you can. You got you. Makes like, sense. he's definitely the on the pedestal, the epitome mm -hmm. of like a player. You know what I'm yeah, saying? not like, for sure. He's up there. He's crowned. So no, nah, for sure. For sure. Favorite sneaker to hoop in? Ooh. Uh da, 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 da. Jordan 10. Mm. Or... They're so comfortable. All the 10 so comfortable. Jordan 10. I, I would I, I can even go down the line. I would say Jordan 10, Kobe 10. Mm -hmm. Or the PG1. See, I've never had a, a pair of PG1 sneakers. I had the Kobe tens. I had some, um, and I had the Jordan tens. I never had a pair of PG ones. And for y'all out there, don't know what the Jordan tens was. They the one that had all the the records and stuff on the bottom for of the sure. on the bottom on the, the yep. scoring yep. champ, MVP, yep. all of that. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. I I had two pair of them in college. Well, I had I had more than two pair, but it was two pair that I wore in college, and I wore them to the I wore them to the joint start to curl up at the toe. Like that's mm. I, I was in them. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that yeah. was my I joints. You. you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Toughest player that you had to guard? KD. You guarded? Oh, yeah. When Katie. you was with the Clippers. Yeah. No, when I was with the Mavs. Um, when I was with the Mavs and he was in OKC. Oh, got you. Okay. It's KD in preseason. Got you. Got you. And he, he, by far, easily the toughest cover I've ever had. Not even, okay. It's, it's not close. Not even close. Not, no, it's yeah. not close. Seven seven foot and you can do He's everything. Legit can do. Seven seven foot, maybe seven one on a good day. All the wiggle in the world. I don't see you when I'm shooting this J. Like mm -hmm. he's so skilled, so polished. He he gonna take his time. It it and certain players have spots. KD don't yeah. got a spot. It's just no, he don't got yeah, to. yeah, he do. It's called ninety four feet. Yeah, it's just wherever I want to get to at this point. <laughs> yeah, that's a spot. Yeah, for wherever sure. I for feel sure. like I want to get to. All right, cool. Yeah. And, and uh, actually, I had a teammate that asked me, like, has there ever been a time where you were starstruck? And it was that pregame, watching him warm mm. up. I watched him warm up gotcha. for 30 minutes. And I would say he missed a total of five shots. Like, it was it was un, it was was otherworldly watching him. And, and these aren't, like, you no know, light reps, like, oh, I'm walking into him. Like, he in a full sweat, like, rip, pound, pull. Nah, for sure. You know, tween, tween, one dribble, like it was, it was crazy, and to the point where, where, um, 
uh, the assistant coach had to tap me like, "Yo, come on, man! Like, it's your because, time to yeah. wake yeah, up. It's your up. time to work yeah. out. Yeah. Like, come on! Like, yeah. I'm just like, damn! Like, but no, he he, the toughest cover by far. It was him. Um, my last question is, um, where if you were at Oregon, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. No, actually, you know what? Let's do this one. The best country that you played in as far as what life life, whatever everything all combined so if you could have something that was all combined what was it what was your favorite country that you played in it would be either between israel and Mm. italy Mm. the basketball culture in italy is through the roof like so I don't think I've ever told anyone this. So my first two years. Breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> my first two years pro, I was in the G League. And right. I felt like I deserved to be in the league. I still right. feel like I deserve to be in the league to this day. Like, But I'm like. Oh, I got, I got something to say that I, I want you. I okay. Want to mention. Okay. So uh, my second year, this is after the Mavs cut me. I'm in the G League with the Mavs team. My agent at the time, Steve. Texas, L- Texas Legend. Texas Legend, Legend right? Which is yep. legend. Mm-hmm. My agent at the time, Steve McCaskill, he calls me. Before we go on this road trip, we go to Reno and then we go somewhere else. It's like a week-long road trip. He calls me. And I'll never forget it. He said, the Mavs are traveling with eight players right now. Show them why you deserve to be on there. I bullshit you not. Tw- 27, 38, 29, 28. And I finished the road trip. 24 and 13. Mm. Got no call, no call up, no nothing. At that point mm. in my career, I was like, is this really for you? I mm. thought about it. I was like, is this really for you? Like is that the first time in your career you thought that? Yeah. I'm like, okay. Th- that was the first time I felt like for some reason you're not good enough, or they don't think you're good enough to be there. And I was okay. like, is this really for you? That following year, I went to Italy, and it gave me an entirely different love for the game. Like, it Mm. it reinstilled the love that I had as a kid. Because when you see 10,000 fans or whatever just standing, face paint, yellow shirts, blue shirts, depending on what jersey you get, screaming, yelling, they chanting, they throwing flares and this, that, whatever. You go into a restaurant and you eat for free because all because of a game. Like it mm-hmm. shows you that's dope. The passion and the culture that they have. So it going to Italy actually reinstilled the love that I have for the game as a kid. Cause it's like this is why I play. Like these people feel the way that I feel about the game that I've always felt. So lo and behold, after that year, that's when I went right back to the Clippers. And it wasn't because I wasn't good enough or this, that, whatever. I just had to find the love that I had previously for. So funny, man. I mean, you, you walking me right into these questions I want to ask, which is dope. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So speaking of the Clippers, you signed with the Clippers um, yeah. in like August or something, right? Of like 2016, yeah. 2017, yeah. 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Like right you after, were the right, first right, player right, to right. sign a, a two-way deal. Sign a two-way contract, yep. First player to sign a two-way contract. Right, so and I want to show know, you something. I'm, I'm going to stop you real quick. You want to know what's Go crazy ahead. about that? Go ahead. I almost turned it down because a month before that, I signed EuroLeague to go to Bomberg in Germany. So I almost I almost didn't even play Summer League that summer. Oh, wow. Sam Castell called me and was like, yo, Mill, because I had previously, before he signed on the Docs coaching staff, he was in D.C. He was in D.C. Yeah. with the Wizards. Right. And he was like, yo, Neil, I need you for summer league. And I'm like, Sam, I'm good, bro. Like, I already signed your league. Like, this is a mm-hmm. lot of money. Like, it's guaranteed. Right. Like, it's all right. mine. He's like, nah, nah. Like, I need you. Like, you come to summer league, this, that, whatever, do your thing. Like, no harm, no foul. Even if nothing happens, you can still go to Germany. You can still go to Germany, right. So, right. But I almost didn't go to summer league that summer. Wow, that's crazy. What, yeah. so, what, I mean... I understand that he was saying no harm, no foul and all of that stuff. But what was your, what made you say, okay, I'm going to go over here to the Clippers. What made you, what made you decide to change your mind? Because, so the the thing for me, I was like, all right, 
a year ago, you felt like you weren't good enough. Now mm -hmm. a coach is calling you and asking you to play. Got you. So there must be something to it. So whatever I did in Italy, there must be something to it. Like, whatever. So I'm mm -hmm. like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to give it a shot. Because either, any way how it folds, if I go out there and I play two minutes, it don't matter. I've already pinned this deal into August. That's waiting wait for journey. you regardless. Yeah. I'm good. Like, I'm right. good regardless. So why not give your dream another shot? Like, this is your right. dream. This is what you've always believed you could do. For sure. And the crazy thing about it, the the week leading up to summer league, I was getting no burn in in the Clippers, whatever. Like I'm on the mm -hmm. sidelines, and when I do get in, like it's like bits and spurts, and I'm getting like I'm getting not picked on, but like a majority of the stuff that's happening, I'm involved in. My guy is scoring, mm -hmm. so I'm like, all right, whatever. We get to uh, we get to summer league. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the first game is kind of slow, it's kind of sluggish. And I already knew the deal. Like you will Sam was like, you'll play or you won't play. Like it is what it is. Like you I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm sitting towards the end of the bench. I'm still rooting my guys on this time, whatever, but I'm sitting towards the end of the bench. And I think we down or whatever. And uh their prospects at the time was like Bryce Johnson and so another cat. I, I can't remember. And finally, Sam looked down the bench. Come on. Mm -hmm. And he put me in. And once he put me in, I think my first shot, I made it. My mm -hmm. second shot, I made it. They called a timeout. All right, cool. Don't, don't, don't blow your load. Like, this is mm -hmm. what you do. Like, whatever. Just keep playing. Uh, we run a play for Kendall Marshall to get downhill. He missed the layup. I get the rebound. Put it back. Mm -hmm. So now I'm on the floor for like two, three minutes. I got eight points. Mm -hmm. Next possession, they swing it. I, I hit another three off the backboard. I'm like, all right, keep like just keep rolling. Right. Back. So that built momentum with us as a team, but it also built momentum within me. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. like this is what you can do. Like, this is what you belong here doing. And so I went from out of the rotation to start it all within a four minute stretch. So the next three games, two games we played, I started. And I think, so that game I finished, the first game I got in, I finished with 18 points. Mm -hmm. The next game I finished with like 17 points. And then the mm -hmm. last game I played that made them offer me the two way contract, I had 18, eight and eight. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was kind of like when I transferred back home, all the news had broke. Oh, right. Jameer Wilson signing a two-way contract. Jameer Wilson. Yep, 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 I, yep. I remember my boy in the locker room next to me after the game, James Bell, my boy Taj, he, uh, <laughs> he, uh, his agent had hit him like, oh, uh, Wilson signing a two-way contract already. Try to get the other one. <laughs> so mm. I like, I sent like a voice note to his, his, uh, his agent, like, yo, man, don't speak on me. Like, you don't know what I'm doing this time. Right, 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 right. Just like, because I hadn't, because nobody had brought it to you. You haven't committed, and yeah, you haven't, and this, yeah. And this exactly. is literally right after the game, but you know, the front oh, office wow. the agents and this, that, and whatever. Yeah. So I guess it was already in the works. And um, mm -hmm. I, I had no idea, but, but yeah, man, I almost didn't go that summer. And some told wow. me, just like, give it a shot. Yeah. Because we wouldn't have gotten this had you not. I want to show this. Oh, this yeah, this, this was wild, man. I want to show this. Dosic finds yeah. Wilson. Wookie yeah. let it fly. Knock it down. Free yeah. ball. Bingo. He's on top. Six to five. Turn this down a little bit so I can hear what you're saying. No, no, this was this was a crazy night. And the only thing I could, I was thinking the whole time, you got to think about it. Um, I think, it, and I think they say it in this clip. I've seen this clip before. At the time where I signed a two-way contract, you only got 45 days with the team. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. Before they had to make a decision. And right. I think this game right here, this was like my 42nd or 41st day. And then Blake, Blake was hurt. And I knew Blake right. was coming back. So I'm like, well, if Blake's coming back or whatever, I want to make it known that it's Blake. He's a he's an all star. It's Blake, then it's me. Like, right. the fourth spot is him, then it's me. It ain't, it ain't nobody else. Like, 
know what I'm saying? If Gallo's in or Gallinari's in, of course, but I want the depth chart to say Blake Griffin and Jameer Wilson. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and, and this was the last game that I ended up playing. They, they ended up sending me down to try and make a decision. Mm-hmm. And, I, and then um, Doc, Doc ended up calling me and was like, man, this is kind of like the toughest decision that I've got to make so far this season because you help our team tremendously. You mm-hmm. give us something that we didn't have. Like you give mm-hmm. us a guy that can stretch the floor, who's athletic enough to guard multiple positions. And he's telling me this while I'm in the post office, like mailing my stuff home because I I, I know what it's coming to. I know they're going to release me because mm-hmm. Doc had previously like, man, I think the best decision to be is to release you and let someone else sign you. Like, I don't want to keep you here and keep you in the G League. You've clearly proven that you belong in this league and you can play here. And he was telling me all this stuff in the post office. He was like, man, if you ever need a, you know, a, you know, a, a lifeline or somebody to speak well on your behalf, you can always call me. Uh, but yeah, man, it, that that night was and it was crazy because I was going into the game thinking like this this could be a, your last game here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because I already knew about the salary cap. I already right. didn't have enough money to sign me and all this other stuff. They had to release somebody or try to wiggle some money around. So I already knew. So going into that and Blake's coming back and you might not be able to play here, you might be in the G League or some other team may have to sign you. Like all those things were kind of going through my head. But before the game, Doc pulled me aside and he said, if you leave one bullet in the chamber, I, I won't put you back in. Mm. <laughs> So and he gave you the confidence once again, put that battery oh. in your back. Yeah. And the rest of it was that. Like, and previously before that, he had called me out in film. Because, mm. like, he had pa- like, someone had passed me the ball. I think Milos or someone had passed me the ball. Or Jawan Evans had passed me the ball. And I, like, I was open, but I didn't shoot it. Mm. I paused it and, like, did the circle joint and was like, what, everybody, what should he do here? Oh, and was like, oh obviously, like, shoot it. Right. And it was like, you know, there's no boys allowed. Like, this grown man leave. He was like, so if you don't shoot it, I'm right to not play his ass, right? Mm. <laughs> Everybody's like, yeah. So Yeah, for sure, for sure. Before the game, he he told me, like, look, obviously I'm, I'm starting at this point. If you right. need one bullet in the chamber, I will not put you back in this game. That's correct. Yeah. I mean, because when you started, how many games? Twelve. Right. My first right. start was December 3rd in Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, you ended up signing with the Lakers, but of course, those yeah. punk ass allegations came out. Yeah. And yeah. of with the with the chick. What what happened in that situation? So, so I went home. So this was after, like I said, I was in the post office. All this is kind of tying into each other. I went home and I p- just packed some. I just kind of changed clothes and put some new sneakers in a bag and whatever. And I went back and everything was set up to uh, the next morning. I was to go to the Lakers facility, have my physical and all this other stuff. And then my agent calls me while I'm at the ATM because I'm pulling out some money to get something to eat. And he was like, yo, like, you know, this woman just kind of like broke a story or she sold her story to TMZ. It's involving you and yada, 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 X, Y, Z. And I'm like, all right, cool, whatever, fuck but what does this mean for this? He was like, obviously they're going to have to do their due diligence on it. And you may not, they may not sign you anymore. I was like, all right, well, that's bullshit. This time, whatever. And he was like, all right, we'll just go to this spot out here. It's called like go labs, get your stuff situated and, you know, hand it in and we'll go from there. So I did all of that and I gave all my stuff to them. And still like the story was at that time in the league, I had created such a buzz for myself. The story was so hot that the Lakers didn't even, even with me giving them all of my stuff and everything and my results and whatever, like they they just didn't want to touch it. And that mm. became a narrative and the story right. after that, because I even remember going home, like after that I left, obviously I left LA and I went back home. I was home for like two weeks. Mm. It was like the roughest time in my career. Cause it's like, I bet. I'm here. I'm clearly supposed to be here, but because of a story or this, that, whatever, like it's preventing me from fulfilling 
like my full potential. And I'll never forget, and I, I still, I'll, th I'll thank him to this day, Brian Levy, who was my GM when I played for the Bakersfield Jam my rookie year out, was now the GM of the Fort Wayne Mad Ants. And I remember him telling me that he had a conversation because that's where I went and played next. He had a conversation with like the front office and like Levy know me, he knew me really well. He knows me really well. And I remember him telling me that they asked him, what's with this story? Is right. it the truth? Is he a wolf in sheep's clothing or he's just a bad victim of a straight bullet? And I remember him speaking, he told me, spoke super highly of me on my, on, on my behalf with that whole situation. Mm -hmm. So that's when I ended up started playing again. But like, it was crazy how- That's crazy, man. Just a week's time, right. every narrative of who Jameel Wilson was went from, oh, he's this, he grinded to get here. He's a 27 year old rookie making his way, this, that, whatever, to now, oh, he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, man. And, it's, and, you, and you fucking see, it's not even that, but you mess with people's livelihood. Oh, man, livelihood. Like, even after that, the first couple of years, like, my ability to, like, yeah, I could sign and play anywhere or I had options to, but the type of, like, the bread that they were trying to throw me now wasn't mm -hmm. of, oh, if an wow. NBA player left and he yeah. wanted to go somewhere else, oh, we're going to throw him the bag. Now it was like, oh, like, okay, we... Wow. We'll give you enough when, money to survive, but not like, you know what I'm saying? So that's what happened. When did you see a shift with that? When did you see a shift to where the bag started getting to where the bag needed to be again? Probably after, because right after that, I went to Italy again. And then I okay. went to, and then, so that first year after that, I went to Italy again. And it was like, it was, it was a bag, but it wasn't yeah. what I probably should have been making. And then the yeah. next year I went to Russia. So just the second year after that, then it was like, all right, cool. Like, okay, you back, you back, right? Yeah, okay, this is cool. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm kind of speed passing because I don't want to make this ahead, long. Ahead, I don't I, I don't want to make this super long. Um, sure. so now last year you played in Puerto Rico, correct? Yeah. Were you out? Was you out there with bikes in the league with bikes? So I was out there in the league with bikes, but before that. So I'll I'll give you a little, nobody knows this either. So I'll give you the little insight about um uh the year before that. So I, I previously before going to Puerto Rico, I signed to play in China with okay. Ice's old team Fujin. Fujin, okay. And that whole situation when I was with the Clippers and the woman came up so they wouldn't grant me my visa. Oh wow. So I was out there and I had to get my visa on my own while I was out there. And then when I ended up getting my visa on my own, the team didn't want to honor the contract. Like they didn't, it was like, mm -hmm. oh, transferred over this, that, whatever. So it was, it was crazy year. And then I end up leaving China. I come home and I'm home for like three, four days and Puerto Rico's calls like, yo, you want to come hoop? And I'm like, shit, please. Like I ain't hooped in whatever. Like I'm Not ready sure. to, get to it. So, uh, so, uh, but yeah, I was out there in Puerto Rico with bikes. And uh, bikes, um, bikes got us on a game or two, man. He got, he got us, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's crazy. Like I, I uh, they, they missed a shot. I got the rebound. They fouled me. I made the first one. <laughs> I made the first one. I missed the second one. Bikes gets the rebound. He's dribbling down the court. Time expires, but he's in his shooting motion. Ref calls a foul. I he remember that. Three free throws. He hit all three free throws. Ball I remember game. that. Ball yeah, game. I watched that. I, I was tapped yeah, into that. Killed me, dog. And yeah, I, I was tapped I, into I, that game. I remember that. Yeah, my team tried to protest it, like, oh, the ball's still in his hand, this time, whatever. But I, I kind of knew when they when I seen it in a uh the 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 whistle when the ref had it, I was like, Oh, this game's over. I say he's gonna, he nah, gonna make all three. He's gonna make all three, right? He's gonna make all three of these. He ain't gonna need right. no money to play. So we in Mexico right now. Yeah. You're out there helping uh, this particular team in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Where are you going after Mexico? So right now, I'm um, I'm signed to go to Uruguay, back uh, South America, after mm -hmm. this. Um, but then again, at the same time, you never know like what can happen 
as, as far as like contractual agreements and things like that. Um, there's still like interest in me for like playing for like actually like a, a good league or stuff. So obviously then you get into the buyout and the sticky situations of things. But right now I'm just, you know, just focusing on staying in shape, getting in shape, I'm you know, sure. honing my craft here. So if I do go where I'm going or I end up somewhere else, it'll be, um, you know, just fluid, like straight into it. But I'm trying to get somewhere uh, that, that's been on my radar for a couple of years. I'm going to leave that under wraps. I'm, hopefully that, that comes through and, you know, I'll text you later with it, but not for sure. I'm, 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 I'm trying to get somewhere right now. Okay. Um, are you still drawing interest at all from the league? So I had a, I had a little buzz after my little stint in Puerto Rico. Honestly, I had a, I had a, I had a lot of buzz for like summer league and, do the mm-hmm. whole thing. You come in, like you'll play, you play well, you get your invite, this, that, and whatever. It kind of died off here and there, but but that was my whole, that was my thing. I, I wanted to get that whole like interest back. And so the, the simple fact that it's still there and like mm-hmm. teams are still kind of like monitoring That's me dope. in there. That's it, dope. It, it's it's, it's kind of dope, but I would love to have an invite or just a shot to prove that I can still do this at a high level. No, you belong there for sure. You you know what I'm saying? So um, if it comes through, you know, I'm always ready for it. If not, not, continue to just, you know, display my crafts and my elsewhere. What do you say to the people um, who say Jamil Wilson doesn't have enough dog in him? Um, Well, (laughs) You know, I, I got, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure you heard that before. I've, I've got it my whole life. And the, and the crazy yeah. thing about it, people would try to pick up on things and be like, oh, you just got to make them mad, then like, whatever. And I found out that, you know, I would have teammates trying to piss me off, like coaches trying to piss me off, just because it would, it does something. Obviously, when you get mad, you, you, you take things to a, a, a different level of whatever. Um, but I, I've heard that my entire life. But the, mm-hmm. the thing about it, you can't line up one dude or say some dude lined me up and was just dogged me out or anything like that. Like, Not you, sure. you can't say that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I go toe-to-toe with anybody, anywhere, no. anytime, any place. And that's um, that's just a testament to who I am. I don't need to be loud and rah-rah and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm saying I, I can be myself and, and get to it. Because at the end of the end of the day, when you look at the box score and everything, or you look at the results, you're gonna see that oh, he clearly had an imprint on the game. Yeah, this imprint is all over this game. Whether right. he's your your type of dog or not, I might mm-hmm. not be a pit bull or German Shepherd or whatever. Right. But best believe, like I walk on four legs and my tail wag too. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I love it. It's just depending on it. how you look at it. You know what I'm saying? Nah, for so, sure. And I've always been that way. For sure. Um. Any shout outs you want to give before we get out of here? Man, listen, man. Obviously, always, you know, the man above, you know, for everything he, he continues to do in my life day in and day out. The family, the girls, my pops, uh, the homies, you, AC, for bringing me on. Appreciate here, you, man. You know this is no, I appreciate you, man, for sure. Oh, man, appreciate I love you. what you're doing, man. This is awesome. I, I'm big on this. Um, and, you know, just, you know, Everybody that shows love, you know, I've always shown love from day one. So if you show love to me, everybody, you know, from the city of Milwaukee, the whole 414, my boys, Bice, DG, Flowers, you know, my little cousin, Wayne, everybody, you know, out in the city, my boy, you cook, Joe Chap doing his thing, you know, people back home, you know, I, I'm, I'm big on, you know, wanting us to, you know, elevate and survive and, and thrive sure. as a whole. So, you know, if you show love, I show love right back, you know what I'm saying, 10 times fold. No doubt, bro. Man, listen, I appreciate you, man. Um, I'm gonna keep in touch with you for sure throughout for the sure, season, bro. Sure, I'm gonna need sure, I'm gonna need them sure. links to check them games out for sure. Sure, sure. I got you. Um, thank you all out there for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, and if you're still here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Sure. Um, sure. I do got more highlights and everything, or more uh interviews coming, and my sure. reaction videos have been taken out off too. If you want me to do a reaction video for you, man, send me a clip. I'll do a reaction video for you for some of your highlights. Send me a clip for sure, and I'll do it. Um, 
But once again, man, thank you. I, I had a chance to bug out and be a fan. Um, mm -hmm. I've been a fan of yours for a minute, bro. And in my platform, I just like to give people their flowers. So I really appreciate you, bro. I appreciate it, yo. I appreciate it. And and, and like I was telling uh, someone else, like it's not often that uh, athletes get to side or a chance to tell their side of the story, right. how things unfolding or whatever. So the whole podcast moving and how things are going on now, I think it's great. And the fact that I could do this with you and you from the city and I've known you for years now, and we, right. we have a report like this, this is big for me. You know what I'm saying? Because for sure. like someone from the same turf that I came from, right. I'm, I'm letting out my side of stuff that people didn't know, or people always wondered about like, this is huge for me. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart, bro. Nah, no doubt, bro. No doubt. Man, listen, until next time, I appreciate y'all. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace.